Welcome to Las Vegas. That is the view from my bedroom window at Planet Hollywood Hotel. And I just wanted to give you a quick flash of that so that you could kind of be here with me whilst I'm here. I'm here as much on vacation as I am on business. I'm here for the annual convention of Centers for Spiritual Living, which is a spiritual organization that teaches the science of mind philosophy, which is something I'm part of. It's also something that really Louise Hay got the bulk of her teaching from. Science of Mind, she studied as a practitioner and as a minister. So if you kind of maybe think you've heard of Science of Mind before, it probably would have been, if you're familiar with the work of Louise Hay, it may have been through that. If you're living in the US, there are a lot of centers for spiritual living all over the place, so maybe you're a member of one of those. Wh whichever way it is, it's recognizing for me today, I really wanted to take a moment to do something I haven't done previously on this video challenge, is to actually let you know that my life wasn't always this way. I'm having, I'm looking out of the window here at this fantastic view, being here in service to an organization that is transforming the world. My life hasn't always been that way. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about my journey so that hopefully, literally, hopefully I can give you some hope if your life isn't kind of quite where you want it to be right now. So in 2001, after a long journey with stress and depression and anxiety really through my life in many different ways, I finally had a complete nervous breakdown, which is hard to imagine if you see me now as this energetic kind of Tigger energy kind of person who's making these videos and who's writing and teaching and doing the work I do in the world. But I've had my moments of the dark night of the soul. I've had my moments when I've felt like I couldn't continue, that I'd had enough of the journey on this particular experience and I was ready to hop off to the next adventure. I've been in that place. And step by step by step, there was something in me that caused me to stick around and to move through that process of having a, a mental and emotional breakdown and literally being on my knees and gradually developing what I'd already learned. I knew a little bit about the kinds of things that I teach now, but that's really what kicked my butt into learning more and ultimately teaching in the way that I do now. And it's been an interesting journey and it hasn't always been an easy one. And I have to be honest, it's not one I would particularly want to revisit and I'm very grateful for where I am right now. But what I want you to know is, especially if you're experiencing any kind of stress or anxiety or depression right now, you can get up from that. It can get better. What are the key things that have really helped me? Well, my spiritual practice, which is why I, I mentioned Centers for Spiritual Living, because that has been a huge part of my recovery in such that it gave me the tools like meditation, like spiritual mind treatment, which is a form of affirmative prayer, like visioning to actually step into a new version of myself and to ultimately the, the kind of the catchphrase and you've heard this from many great teachers is change your thinking change your life now for me that's evolved for me now that's change your beliefs change your life because our beliefs sit deeper we've already discussed that on this video challenge our beliefs are deeper than just our thinking it, our thinking creates our beliefs because we think and we think and we think certain things until they become beliefs and sometimes we can have an instant experience that creates beliefs, often hidden in the, the sub-program, the subconscious mind of our experience. Regular meditation for me is huge. That's why I send out meditation tracks every Monday to my list, because for me, meditation is the cornerstone of relaxing the body, quietening the mind, and allowing you to connect with that still small voice within, that inner inspiration, that connection to the divine, to your source, and so for me, meditation every day, even when I'm on a trip like this and I've got a, a hectic schedule that kicks in tomorrow with meetings and all kinds of uh, kind of formal social engagements that I need to attend in my official capacity, I've got all that going on. I've got a whole bunch of paperwork to keep up with. Then I'm still going to be doing the video challenge. I'm still going to be recording the radio show and doing the Monday meditations and all those other things that I do every week. Even when I get this kind of busy, because I have these anchors, these cornerstones of my practice, it allows me to stay calm, stay relaxed, and be in that place of connectedness. So no matter where you are with your life right now, know that step by step by step, there are things that can really help you. I'm just about to post um, my radio show from last week, my, the radio show I do on Natural Health Radio, and it was all about creating soaring self-esteem, seven steps to soaring self-esteem. And I know that self-esteem is a big player in stress and depression and anxiety because it often hinges around that feeling that we're somehow not good enough, that we're not okay, that there's something wrong with us. So I'll post a link as soon as I've got all of the tags in place. I'll post a link to that radio show and you may want to take the time. It's an hour long show, but I really invite you to take the time to learn those seven steps to soaring self-esteem.
that will really help you because when we start to love and accept who we are, everything else gets so much easier because we're in that place of anchored connection both to ourselves and to the indwelling presence of spirit that is who we really are. So it's a process, it's a step-by-step -step thing. It took me a good two years from when I absolutely hit the floor and, and couldn't, basically couldn't stop crying and didn't want to get out of bed. From that place when I was really at rock bottom, it took me about two years before I was able to return to a corporate job and really to be able to function in the world using all of my faculties. So it's a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process. More important than anything is be gentle with yourself. Don't give yourself a hard time for being where you are. You are, where you are where you are, and that's okay. As I say, when I experience that, it's not something I would want to dive into again, but I can honestly recognize it as something that was incredibly good for me. Yeah, and that's really hard to hear. If you're in the depths of it, I understand. I really understand. I always say when I'm teaching, if somebody came along at that point when I was on my knees and said to me, oh, this is going to be the best thing that ever happened to you, I probably would have punched them in the nose. So, you know, I know where that, is I know what that feels like so if you're there just recognize that you are where you are and there's no good blaming yourself or shaming yourself for being where you are I often hear from people I feel so stupid you're not stupid you're just sensitive and you've been in a set of experiences that have taken you to where you are and it is perfectly possible because I can prove it I've done it for myself I'm not speaking from an academic learned experience I'm speaking from this has been my journey and it hasn't always been easy and I can still look at it and see the gifts within it and I know that that is there for you too so be gentle with yourself check out the seven steps to soaring self-esteem and really start working on accepting yourself it's a paradox but when we actually surrender into okay this is where I am right now that allows a space for that inspiration to start coming in to say okay how do we move forward from this how do we get out of here and step by step by step make different choices and step into a greater yet to be for your experience. I know it's possible because I've done it. I invite for you a spectacular day, a spectacular week and I'm going to close out. I'm just going to let you have another look at the view from this window. It's truly a blessing and I am deeply grateful for my life. Have a spectacular week. Enjoy Las Vegas. I certainly will be enjoying it and I will see you tomorrow.